unless we do something about that cadre of young people, tens of thousands of them, born out of wedlock, without parents, without supervision, without any structure, without any conscience developing, because they literally, I yield myself three more minutes, because they literally have not been socialized. They literally have not had an opportunity. We should focus on them now, not out of a liberal instinct for love, brother, and humanity, although I think that's a good instinct, but for simple, pragmatic reasons. If we don't, they will portion of them will become the predators 15 years from now. Madam President, we have predators on our streets. That society has, in fact, in part because of its neglect, created. Again, it does not mean because we created them that we somehow forgive them or do not take them out of society to protect my family and yours from them. They are beyond the pale, many of those people. Beyond the pale. And it's a sad commentary on society. We have no choice but to take them out of society. Now, who you just heard was um, Joe Biden, and that's a speech on the crime bill that um, that his name bears. He says it himself. He did the crime bill in 1994, then Joe Biden. So we took a deeper look into the crime bill of 1994, the violent crime control law enforcement of 1994. And we're going to do a series on it. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we got to break this down and see what really, really, truly happened to us. You know, us being African-Americans or ADOS and what Joe Biden was proposing, you know. And as you see, this comes from the House, the legal house, government, hot dog gov. So it's a government document right here we're looking at. And it explains the House bill, you know. So we're going to go a little bit more deeper today and see how this, this bill, had an effect on a teacher's union. You know, as you talking about, we got these kids in society to blame. Well, hell, there's public schools and all type of other stuff that, you know, supposed to prevent the social development, as you was talking about, that supposed to build up the social development. But we're going to see what happened in all that stuff like that. We're going to go a little bit deeper in that. Because the teacher's union, who really didn't give a damn, you know what I'm saying, put their pension money and invested in these prisons, you know, and we're going to show and prove that, you know what I'm saying? So they really give a damn about the black children per se. You know what I'm saying? They liked you, they was gonna let you pass. If they didn't like you, they was just preparing you for a prison, basically. You feel me? And this gonna show and prove that it was in the crime bill and what other things like that. So without further delay, we gonna go deep into it. As you see, the Violent Control Act of Law Enforcement of 1994. All right, right here, we're on page 52 of it. Um, subtitle D, Family and Community Endeavor School Grant Programs, <clears throat> Section 3041, Community Schools and Youth Services and Supervision Grant Programs. You know, this section may be said as Community School Youth Services and Supervision Grant Program Act of 1994. Definition, a child meaning a person not younger than five, but not older than 18. Community-based organization means a private, local, or initiated Locally initiated community-based organization that A is a nonprofit or is a definition of section 10323 of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act of 1974. B is operative consortium of services provider consisting of representative of five or more of the following categories of a present of a persons. A residence of a community, Business and civic leaders actively providing provide employment and business development opportunities in the community. Number three, educators, which we're going to be focusing on, the educators. Four, the religious organization, which shall not be provide any secretary information or secretary worship in connection with the activities funded under this title, law enforcement agencies, public housing, and other public agencies. No, so secretary means secretary of health and human services in conversation and coordination with the attorney general. It's about, so it goes way up, you know, got a secretary of health and human services involved in this and things of this nature. Standing on page 54. 
the use of funds. Such community-based organization, A, shall use funds made available through the grant to provide to children and eligible communities services and activities that, one, should supervise sports programs and extracurricular activity programs that are offered, and after school and all weekend and holiday and during the school year, two, as daily full programs and extend to available resources permit or as part of the day programs during the summer months, B, providing such extracurricular activities and academic programs shall provide programs such as curriculum-based supervised educational work, educational workforce preparation, entrepreneurship, cultural, health programs, social activities, arts and crafts programs, dance programs, tutorial and mentoring programs, and other related devices, related activities. C, the main use of such funds of minor innovation affects facilities and existence of prior operations of programs that are necessary for operations of the programs for the organization that receive grants and purchasing for sports and recreational equipment. So it was in, this is so they in the bill that was supposed to provide all this stuff, supposed to provide more sports facilities, which it really never did in 94, more educational programs, which it never really did because as you heard Joe Biden say, he was saying that, you know, it's our fault of our own, but these are predators. You know, saying it was predators and whatnot. So it really didn't, you know, we do that too much for the help out. But let's keep going down. Because you know, you gotta read through some of the blah blah, you know, to get what is needed. Section 30, 42, 42. Family and Community Endeavor School Grant Program. <clears throat> Should this section be kind of the Family and Community Endeavor Schools Act? The purpose is purpose of this section to improve overall development of at-risk children who reside in el eligible communities as defined in subsection one and three. The program authority, the secretary may award grants on a competitive basis to eligible local entities to pay the federal share of assisting eligible communities to develop and carry out programs in accordance with this section. No local entity shall receive a grant less than $250,000 in a fiscal year. Amounts made through such grants shall remain available until it's spending. So it's a plethora of grant. You got it forever. Program requirements. Improvement program. A local entity that receives funds under this section shall develop and expand programs that are designed to improve academic and social development by instituting a collaborative structure that trains and coordinates the effort of teachers, administrators, social workers, guidance counselors, parents, and school volunteers to provide a current social services for at-risk students at a selected public school in eligible communities. Two, optional activities. A local entity that receives funds under this section may develop a variety of programs to serve the comprehension ideas of students, including A, homework assistance and after-school programs, including educational, social, and athletic activities, B, nutrient services, C, mentor programs, D, family council, and E, parental training programs. Eligible community identification. The secretary, through regulation, shall define the criteria necessary as qualified under the eligible community as defined in subsection one and three. Grant eligibility. To be eligible to receive a grant under this section, a local entity shall, one, identify as an eligible community that needs to be assisted. Two, develop community planning process that includes parents, family members, local school officials, teachers employed at school with eligible communities. B, public housing resident organization members and where applicable A and E, public and private nonprofit organizations that provide education, child protective services, or other human services to low income or at risk children and their families. And three, develop a concentrated strategy for implementation of the community planning process developed under paragraph two that the targets cluster at risk children in an eligible community. And talking about how the application goes through, you know. Application need to put on through stuff like that. Be to provide 
evidence to support our communist activities plans for, from community leaders, school district, local official, and other organizations that the local entity determines appropriate. C, to provide assurance that the local entity will use grant funds under the subsection to implement a program required on listed in subsection D. Subsection D, to include an estimate of the number of children in the eligible community expected to be served under the program. Right? Number five, E, to provide assurance to a local entity that will comply with the evaluation request under subsection K and any research effort authorized under federal law. Any research effort authorized under federal law and any investigation by the secretary. So basically, just coughing up information. F, to provide insurance that the local entity should prepare and submit to the secretary an annual report regarding any program conducted under this section. G, to provide insurance that the funds made available under this section shall be used supplemented and not supplanted by other federal funds that would otherwise be available for activities funded under this section. Now, when you go through all this, let me read the last one, H, the financial insurance so that the local entity will maintain a separate account of records of the program. Now, you got to go through a review panel, a peer review panel right here. You know, the secretary should establish a peer review panel not to see eight members. It's a comprise of individuals who demonstrate experience in designing and implementing programs, improve academic and social development of at-risk children. The functions on the panel shall make recommendations to the secretary regarding that the model achieves Program requirements indicated in subsection D, a process where local entities can request such a model, and B, a design for evaluation programs assisted in the subsection, in this section, excuse me. So the payment shares, the federal share of the payments. The secretary shall subject and available appropriations pay to local entities having an application under the subsection G, the federal share of costs of developing and carrying out programs refers to subsection. Non-federal share of costs may be in cash or in kind, fairly by way, including personnel, plant, equipment, and services. The secretary, the evaluation, the secretary shall require an evaluation of program assistance under this section, which shall include an assessment of academics and social achievement of the children assisted with the funds provided for them. Definition, for the purpose of this section, the term secretary, so when I read the term secretary, it meant Secretary for the Department of Education. because you know, it, this crime bill touched every aspect of American life. You know what I'm saying? Earlier, you heard already have had Department of Human Services. Then we broke it down to the we had Department of Education. You understand me? But the Secretary, where that panel comes from, it comes from the Department of Education. The term local entity means a local education agency or a community-based organization as defined in Section 1471.3 of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965. Three, the term eligible community means the area which meets the criteria with respect to significant poverty and significant violent crime. And such addition to criteria as the secretary may be regulated and required. Four, the term public schools mean any elementary, means elementary school as defined in section 4171 of the Elementary School Secondary Education Act of 1965, right? And this is how much the they got, right? This is how much money they got. In general, the authorization is appropriate to carry out this subtitle. They got 37 million in 1965. Then it went to a huge jump to 100 million, 103 million in 1996. From, so for one year, it jumped to over 70 million. From 1996 to 1997, went from 103 to 1996 to 121 in 1997. Then in 1998, it went from 121,000 million, excuse me, to 153 million. Then from there, from 1998 to 1999, it went from 103, 153 million to 193 million. And from 99 to 2000, it went to 200 million. You know what I'm saying? So. That's how much money is pumping into the so-called program. But let's see what happened. What did the teachers union, because it's part of the education, what actually did happen with this stuff? Now this right here, you see is the, uh, the teachers union. 
just come straight from the teachers union, you know, union of professionals. And what the teachers union did with the money, they invested in private prisons. You know what I'm saying? Because the bill is a crime bill, still eventually to build more prisons. So instead of enforcing building more schools and trying to implement the programs they had, they said, damn it, let's just go invest and build more prisons for these people. Let's see why. I'm going to blow it up. Just give me a minute. All right. Since 2013, the American Federation of Teachers has periodically released a ranking assets manager reports. These reports provide information for the purpose of transparency, risk analysis, and education for pension funds of trustees and managers. This is AFT's second report in a two-part series, highlighting the investment risk of the pension and other investors whose portfolio contains investments in private prisons industry. Right? So that's what they did with that money. They invested the money into private prisons instead of invested the money in the schools. This is the teachers union now. You know what I'm saying? Part one of this series is private prison, entertainment, immigrant detention, and investment risk. You know, so you know, we're gonna get more into that. Part two of the series, which we're on right now, names the private equity firms that profit and fuel the mass incarceration of black and brown people in the United States. Remember, they got all this money from the Joe Biden crime bill. The United States incarcerated more people than any other country on or in the world, and both in terms of number of individuals incarcerated and percentage of population. In 2016, there was roughly 2.2 million people in the country's prisons and jail. One out of every 116 adults in the United States was incarcerated. A far higher rate in countries with more authoritarian regimes, such as Russia, the Philippines, and Iran. If the number of imprisoned individuals in the United States made up a city, it would be the fifth largest in the country. Mm. This practice is stunning a significant proportion of the population of the criminal justice system known as mass incarceration. It overwhelmingly and discriminatingly impacts communities of color. Although people of color make up only 30% of the population, they make up 60% of the U.S. incarceration population. The American Civil Liberty Union estimated that one out of three black boys and one out of six of Latino boys can expect to go to prison in their lifetime, compared to one out of 17 white boys. According to the NAACP, if African Americans and Hispanics were incarcerated at the same rates as whites, prison and jail population would decline almost by 40%, which would mess up that bill because, you know, the bill feeds over how many people you lock up. The, the 94 Joe, John Bond, Joe, Joe Biden crime bill. This racial divide and incarceration rate is exacerbated by poverty. The 2015 report on prison policy initiatives states that the American prison system is bursting at the seams with people who have been shut of the economy and who have neither the quality education which we just talked about. They were trying to build that up. The teachers union said, hell no, fuck that. We're going to put the money in, in, in private prisons not access, and nor access to good job. Knowing the medium annual income of the United States of the USMA population prior to incarceration is only $19,000. Social economic status plays a significant role in determining whether someone will experience incarceration. Yet yeah, racial disparities in incarceration rate and sentencing presents, persists with disproportionately a negative impact on American, African-American men in particular. The AFT, the American Federation of Teachers, this is the union, believes in combating mass incarceration is a vital civil rights and humanitarian issue. As this report demonstrates, it's also an investment issue. That's why the issue of private prisons is now a subject of risk analysis, something that the AFT has done periodically since, 19, since 2013 to provide information as a purpose of transparency and education to pension fund trustees. In 2015, it released a task force called, you know, Reclaiming the Promise of Racial Equality, or Racial Equity, excuse me. This means for the union and the allies, because this union got paid off that bill. Somebody had to build the prisons. You understand me? So the police union, somebody had to set those new police officers in there. So the union has, that's what you see on Joe Biden's nuts now, because they have mad ties to that bill. They got a big book who paid off of that. This called for the union and the allies to work to combat factors to lead to mass incarceration of young black males. The risk assessment manager reported any aim, aims to combat one of these factors, the growth of the private, private prison industry, 
who business model depends on increasing the number of black people in uh, people in attention, also under conditions that violate their human rights. As nearly two thirds of prisoners are black and Latino, the push to incarcerate larger numbers will undoubtedly lead to a further disproportion of incarceration of people of color. The mass incarceration crisis is felt deeply by AFT members. The National Resource for Children and Families of the Incarceration at Rutgers University estimated that 2.7 million children in the United States have an incarcerated parent, or about one in 28 children. 44 to 55% of fathers in prison and 64 to 80% of mothers in prison had at least one minor child living with them before incarceration. Because of more than half the incarcerated parents will be breadwinners for the family, children with incarcerated parents are more likely to experience housing, experience poverty, and housing instability, both which can disrupt learning. According to the Economic Policy Institute, children with incarcerated parents are more unlikely to drop out of school, develop learning disabilities, and suffer such elements as asthma, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, migraines, depression, and leading EPI to include a criminal justice policy of education or policy. Include that to conclude that the criminal justice policy is an educational policy. Furthermore, zero tolerance discipline policies that the school had previously adopted had an effect of criminalizing students with a disappointing effect on students of color who face greater rates of suspension, expulsion, and being brought up on criminal charges. The effect had been that children leaving public school, which provided the support and resources they need. Hmm. Clearly, the mass incarceration crisis impacts educators and students they teach. The crisis is fueled by power by companies that profit from incarceration of communities of color. Large for profit prisoner operators like Core Civic and GEO Group, along with a number of smaller companies owned by private equity firms that provide correction related support services, together made billions of dollars annually when they disproportionate numbers of Black and Latino people get sent to prison. That's why mass incarceration is not only a racial justice and civil rights issue, it is also an investment issue. Because people get paid when they send black people to prison. A lot of people get paid off of that. Like I said, the youths get paid, the police get paid, the correction officers get paid, Department of Human Service, the social worker get paid. It's a, it's a business. You know what I'm saying? A large number of pension, public pension funds, along with in and institutional investors, have tens of millions of dollars worth of exposure to the private prison industry through their investment portfolios. Whether through direct owner sales of, of the publicly traded private prison companies, indirect exposure through head funds or index funds, or investing in private equity firms, the own companies provide correctional related services. Private prison companies and the companies that provide outsourced services to correctional facilities have no initiative to address the problem of mass incarceration. Like Joe Biden, he said he stand by the bill because a lot of people got paid by it. That's why he won't apologize for it. Because when you start digging deep like we digging in now, you see that every union got paid off of this. Every union. A, a bunch of nonprofits got paid off of this too. 501c3s and churches shut their mouth and had to jump in it. In fact, the private mass, the private prison companies contribute actively to the current system of mass incarceration through political expenditures, policy development, and lobbying. These companies, however, do not have an incentive to cut the cost to maximize their profits. As the report would demonstrate, many achieve this by lowering wages for workers, understaffing, skimping on training, and providing low services possible to inmates at the times of breaking the law and at the time at the expense of inmates' health, safety, and lives. Which, by the way, the bill talks about. You know what I'm saying? We're going to go more in depth about the uh, 1994 crime bill because it nullifies the Eighth Amendment. To build these prisons and stuff like that, the Eighth Amendment has to get nullified. You know what I'm saying? You got to jump through a lot of hoops to prove your Eighth Amendment, which is um, cruel and unusual punishment. We're going to talk about that. Here's the important part, one of the important parts. A number of pension funds have already taken steps to mitigate mass incarceration risks, with three of the four largest public pension funds in the United States. The California State Treasury Returns, California State Teachers Retirement System, the New York City Employees Retirement System, the New York State Common Where Retirement Fund is divested from pub direct holdings and public pensions companies over the past two years. 
But for the past 25 years, they just locking black people up. They was getting paid off of that. But we're going to see what made them have a conscience a little bit later on in this, in this court. Because we can't excuse these people. we got to punish these people, too. The other two funds with AF members participate, the Chicago Teachers Pension Fund and the New Jersey State and Deficit Council also voted to buy divest from private prisons companies in the recent months, indicating growing recognition among pension funds that the private pension investment holds a serious investment to the risk of workers with savings retirement, retirement savings. All right. On August 17, 2018, Chicago Teachers Pension Fund added migration detention centers and other private pension. That's what made it really stop. Let me go back up a little bit. I don't want to mess up this up. Several private pen several pension funds had divested from private pension prisons industry over the last several years, including New York City Employee Retirement System, New York State Common Retirement System, and the Philadelphia Board of Pensions and Retirements. Since the release of Part 1 of this report in August 2018, remember, that's when they finally woke up, less than a year ago. So they, the teachers union finally said, oh, this shit is wrong. We've been in Christ 19, and these are kids, they was raising up in, in the schools. You know what I'm saying? So they was basically a prison, a school-to-prison pipeline that was basically established. Now they're saying they, they ain't going to get their hands out of the cookie jar. On August 17, 2018, the Chicago Teachers Union Pension, the Chicago Teachers Pension Fund, added immigrant detention centers and other private pension operators to the list of prohibited investments. You know? So they did that, and they said a little while. Adding Chicago Teachers Union President Jesse Sharkey, our union members serve tens of thousands of immigrant students in our schools. We are committed to taking any steps to protect the families from disruption or repressions. So, and that includes a refusal to support a corporation that seeks to profit on a national attack on immigrants. The same corporation that continue to fund to profit from mass incarceration of black people and that continue to harm visit hires upon black to our black students. But the black students, they've been going over 25 years. The immigration crisis just popped up recently, not really just recently, but the immigration process who are not Americans, you know what I'm saying? Who, who really don't have no, they, you know, not the United States of America and the Constitution. They really, that's the reason why they really jumped on it was to help them out. The black people came second, as you see. This is according to the Chicago Teachers Union President, Jesse Starkey. Our union members serve tens of thousands of immigrants, students in our school. And we are committed to taking any and all steps to protect family from disruption or repression. That includes our refusal to support corporations that seek to profit from the national attack on immigrants, right? The same corporation that continue to profit from mass incarceration of black people and that continues to harm to visit our family, to visit the families of our black students. But they really didn't care back 25 years ago. You know what I'm saying? It just when the Trump did what he did, they're like, oh, we need to divest money from here. Same thing here, right here. August 31st, 2018, New Jersey Pension Fund divested stake in GO Group totaling 1.3 million. Staying out of vision of, of investment, reviewed the investment merits, including consideration of environment, social, and governance issues. Consistent with the flurry responsibility of elected to sell the security. November 8th, 2018, California State Teachers Retirement System Investment Committee voted to divest all directly shares in the CEO group and core civic core, core civic within six months. You know, the investment, the decision to divest followed the months of Kyle Sertrick's and heightened engagement with the CEO, GEO group and a civic core civic regarding their business practices, which includes business them to various attention centers and face-to-face -face meeting with, with senior management concerning operational process and risk management efforts. According to the pension fund, which cites risks related to the human rights violations of immigrant children and children of immigrants detained at company facilities. So when, when they, once again, that show you that they really didn't care about black people, the union, when they came out to the immigrants, yeah, we all helped them out. When they came out to black people, man, fuck them. You know, you locking them niggas up. December 2018, the California Public Employees Retirement System, the largest public pension fund in the country, announced engaging in dialogue with the management core, civic, and the GEO group as well, 
as defense contractor General Dynamics around the concerns related to the company's involvement in immigrant detention. Once again, immigrant detention. They, even though they was locking black people up like that, just it just didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? And we supposed to be the American citizens. But that's the reason why the, the teachers union, the AEFT, America's Federation of Teachers, finally broke with it. It was okay when he was locking up black children, destroying black families. But when that stuff at the border happened with Trump, they finally got a brain and said, we can't do this no more. Okay, let's keep on going down. Let's keep on going down, 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 down. It names the group. We don't name some of these people that got money still involved in this. And maybe your state might come up. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? You know, it's some of what was going on with this, what happens in these detention centers. You know, and like I said, it's been going on for years for black people, but I guess it just took one non American or immigrant or whatever, but something happened to them and they blow it up. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Everybody should know about centers. You know, that's the people, that's the people that make the cards and stuff like that. They're doing an the online visitation. You know how you gotta get the number when you call, when you up in there, you gotta use an out-of-state number to you know to save your minutes and stuff like that. You know. Who else is involved with this? In 2013, Milwaukee County Jail in Wisconsin hired a private company, Armor All Correction Health Services, to provide healthcare services to jail and replacing unionized registered workers. Because when they do this stuff, if, if, the, if the private prisons were unionized, you wouldn't hear shit about this. That's real talk. Members of the Wisconsin Federation of Nurses and Public Health and Health Professionals. Upon taking over healthcare as a jail service, I was again slashing staffing levels with a former WMP member describing armor approach as an accident waiting to happen. In 2016, four inmates died in jail over the course of a, of a few months. You know, one inmate had gave birth in jail to a child. So, you know, that's how it goes down over there. ATF, the, AF, the AFT, the American Federation of Teachers, represent public employees who work at various professions, including correction officers and parole and probation officers who work in prisons with the formerly incarcerated every day. So the American Federation of Teachers had this part of their union. As a result, these workers understand the criminal justice system and are strong advocates for fair and equal treatment for prison workers and the incarcerated. AFT, Public employees recognize that private prisons put both public safety and public employee pensions at risk and believe in privatizing our justice system as a threat to democracy. Once again, part two of it, like I said, they showed the immigrants. This right here showed that if the private pension, if the private prisons were unionized, you wouldn't hear shit about this. You'd be like, let's keep going on, let's continue the business. But this is the way they forced it and unionized the, public, the, um, the private pensions, the private prisons. So they're doing it by taking away their money. You know what I'm saying? So this is how they're getting down. Let me show another difference. This is going to happen to Hunter Biden. Private prison companies face vulnerabilities to, to political change that carry because of the humanitarian issues associated with their business. For example, in 2016, the Obama administration announced a phase of the use of private prisons for federal detainees. In 2017, the Trump administration reversed the decision. In December 2018, the First Step Act was signed into law which is meant to lead thousands of federal nonviolent drug offenders to qualify for early release or reduced sentences. And another example of how private prisons are subject to political events, in 2019, January, a federal jail in Brooklyn Experience electrical failing, leaving more than a thousand inmates with middle heat and no lights in their cells for at least a week. The power failure happened during the government shutdown, which impeded the lawyers' ability to meet their clients in jail and monitor the situation. So, the reason why the unions are sticking up now and saying they peace now because the private prisons are not being unionized, so they can't get their people in there and do and do their thing. So what they're trying to do is just take away their private equity of their pensions and stuff that they have put in there. You know, they still got the prison to pipeline school, the school to pipeline 
prison thing going down. You understand me? You know, because still the law still affected the 1994 crime bill. But they're just trying to do it in a better way. Now, well, you know, you're going to cut our funds. We need to do, we need to do more. We need more money. You're trying to cut our stuff. You know, it's, it's very slick and very crafty. You know what I'm saying? I have stated last time on phone, as we wrap the video up, you know, we're going to talk about the public pension ownership of core civic and the geo group this is as of january 16 2019 but these are the people that invest in private prisons you understand me these are the groups and the unions and all type of stuff like that how much shares they got in a core civic shares in the geo group alaska retirement management board arizona state retirement system so all arizona state employees have brought money to the public, you know, prisons and the private prison thing. California public employees retirement system. California state teachers retirement system. Colorado public employees retirement system. Employees retirement system of Texas. Illinois State Board of Investment. Louisiana State Employees Retirement System. Michigan Department of Treasury Investment Management. Municipal Employees Retirement System of Michigan. New Jersey Division of Investments. New Mexico Educational Retirement Board. New York State Teachers Retirement System. Ohio Public Employees Retirement System. Oregon Investment Council. Pennsylvania Public School Employee Retirement System. Retirement Systems of Alabama. The State Administration Board of Florida. The State Teachers Retirement System of Ohio. South Dakota Investment Council. Teachers Retirement System of Texas. Teachers Retirement System of the State of Kentucky. Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System and Utah Retirement Systems. So these retirement systems, and all these states that I named, has a big investment in private prisons and the school to pipeline, the prison pipeline to send your kids to prison, your African American children, your ADOS children to prison, all for it. So this right here should substantiate that. You know, I'm gonna put this in the um, inbox too, so people can read it yourself. For this part too. You know, in my state, they got you know, what I'm saying they got two of them: the Michigan Department of Treasury Investment Management and the Municipal Employee Retirement System of Michigan. So, this is what we're facing against. We have no friends, and the union really didn't want to give a damn if they was in it. If they was in the public, in the private system, and they had their own union in there. You will not hear you talk about this. They will continue on. And all this stemmed from, as I stated earlier, from the 1994 Joe Biden crime bill. Where everybody's trying to get that money. You understand me? And to get that money on up. So that you know the teachers union just opened, they got their money and they just started investing the prison. Well, we're not doing a good job anyway. So let's invest in these prison scams. And that's what they did. Anywho, this is a cost gift fund day. You know, earn your head self with knowledge, man, because, you know, it's real wicked in these streets. You know what I'm saying? We have no friends. This is Joe Biden and all that stuff and Clinton and all that and, and Obama. This is the Democratic side of the unions. And the Republicans ain't no goddamn better. So, you know, we got to form our own and do what we need to do. Take care of our own. Anyway, y'all have a wonderful day. Peace. And subscribe to the channel because we're going to get deeper on this stuff. We're going to have a series about 1994 crime bill because there's a lot of stuff that need to be discussed. Peace and y'all have a wonderful one.